everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today we are going to take a look at another piece from my antique collection. This is one of my newer acquisitions. I just got this a couple of months ago uh, in 2021 and I think that it somehow went into my subconscious, the design of this bodice, because I feel like it's going to look familiar to you. <laughs> and that is true if you have seen my 1830s video, because I just feel like my 1830s bodice wound up looking a little bit like this bodice. This one is not quite that old. It's not from the 1830s, but it is one of the oldest bodices in my collection. This thing is somewhere around 150 to 160 years old, because it does date to the 1860s. And I'll show you some of the things that you can kind of tell about a bodice that makes you know when it's from or specifically that this one is from the 1860s but you'll see very shortly just how kind of similar the design of this bodice is to my new 1830s dress it's gonna look familiar I promise so let's go ahead and take a look at this new bodice so the first thing that I want to show you about this bodice is just how much it does not fit my tiny form because oh my god this thing is like so small it's one of the smallest pieces in my collection. This is how much it does not fit my small form. This form has a waist of approximately 27 to 28 inches. I forget exactly what the bust is but I think it's in like the 33-34 range and you can see just how much this doesn't fit at all. It kind of fits in the back. <laughs> so yes, we are going to be taking a look at this plaid bodice that happens to be decorated with a lot of little bows. Actually, way more bows than my 1830s dress has. So let's go ahead and take a much closer look and I'm gonna really dive in and show you all of the details of this bodice. In all honesty, I probably should have done an unboxing of this bodice because I literally squeed when I opened it up. I mean, look how freaking cute this thing is with all of its little bows, all seven of them all down the front. It's just so adorable and I love the plaid and just wait till you see the back too because the shaping is wonderful. Overall, it is a relatively plain bodice, and honestly, bodices of this era, the 1860s, were often very plain, very simply constructed. So let's take a look at some of the things that make this an 1860s bodice. For one thing, look at the humongous slope of this shoulder. I mean, this is a super, super wide shoulder. And in the 1860s, they really liked that long, wide shoulder look. And this also has some of the world's tiniest piping. Look how, in comparison with my thumb, look just how absolutely tiny that piping is. It's really the most delicate thing and they just love tiny piping in the 1860s. This also has a pretty simple shape. It's just got two darts here and when we get to the back there's a trademark of the 1860s in the back as well. The sleeves go kind of wide through the middle and then down to a little narrow opening but they do start a little wider. And that is something that you see a lot in the 1860s as well, along with that very, very high neckline. So the bows are just little bits of folded fabric with a little bit folded around it here. And they're just sewn on really with very large tacking stitches. The condition of this bodice is not ideal. We do have quite a bit of holes going on, particularly on the sleeves. The bodice itself does a little bit better than the sleeves, but we do have holes on both sleeves, but I got it for a really great deal, so I'm totally okay with that, particularly how cute this bodice is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back. From farther away, it looks honestly like they did just a wonderful job of matching the plaids here, which frankly they did. When you get closer, you can see that there is actually a seam right here and look how well they matched those plaids. I mean, that is a really, really good job on a difficult curved seam. 
So this narrow fiddle back, as I have heard it called, this is another trademark of the 1860s where it comes to such a narrow little back at the bottom, but then it really broadens up and this seam travels into the arm's eye up here and then has that really big long shoulder seam again like we we're looking at in the front. So that is a nice trademark of the 1860s as well. But otherwise, very, very simple back. We just have the side back pieces here and the center back piece here. And that front was all one piece with the two darts. So I think we are about time to go ahead and look inside the bodice now. So as we're moving inside, one of the things that I want to point out are these really interesting rows of stitches that we get right along here. There are two rows of stitches, one here, one here, and they're very, very tiny little stitches. But what's going on here is that this is actually the fold of the center front here. It's actually been stitched down by machine all the way through even the outer layer. This one, on the other hand, almost seems to be a tuck. At one point, right about here, this tuck actually opens up and then comes back closed again. So it seems like it was a little tuck that was taken and it's still sewed shut down here, but then it's open up here. And I don't know why they would have done that. It really wouldn't take in much, but maybe it got just a touch big in the waist and that was what they decided to do to fix it. The other interesting thing, by the way, is that this is the side that has the hooks, even though this side is the one that laps over the front. So this has the eyes on here, and that means that it closes here with like a good one inch or so that sticks out over the edge of that closure, which I think is really interesting, and I haven't seen that on a bodice before. Going from the outside to the inside, this by the way is silk taffeta, the crispy kind of starting to fall apart type of silk taffeta. But inside we have a pretty hefty polished cotton. And the inside is really in good condition, albeit very dirty. But the fabric itself, like we don't have any tearing or anything in here. And you can still see that sheen to the polished cotton. I mean, it is shiny, which is just pretty fascinating. So this is a cool bodice to look at in comparison with my two other 1860s pieces because this one actually is boned. Both of my other 1860s pieces are not boned, but in this one we have bones in each of the darts here and then bones on the side seam and that's the same for each side. This one in fact is sticking out below the bottom so we can see that little bit of boning. I do believe that that is baleen. Uh, it's like hard and black and I have heard and kind of sharp and I've heard that that is a signal that it is baleen. And in the darts it's just kind of whipped there and actually really that's what's going on in the seam allowance here too. It's just kind of whipped. So speaking of seam allowances it's interesting to see that we have these rough edges here that are not finished in our seam allowances on the side but in the center back here these seam allowances were actually I believe and I could be wrong here wait a second okay I just had a really interesting realization that I did not notice when I was looking at this bodice when I unboxed it and I'm noticing it now that these fiddleback seams I'm pretty sure they're fake they're not actually seams they're tucks because feeling on either side of this, there is no feeling of any seam allowance there. And these are just the tiniest, tiniest little things. And I believe that that is why our pattern matched so almost perfectly on the outside. It's actually all one piece and they faked it with these tiny little stitches on this tiny tuck to get the fiddle back look, even though it's all one piece. That's brilliant. Brilliant and also like, I don't know why they did that. I don't think I've seen that before, but I think that is so cool. And now I wanna know more if that was a common thing or if it was just that this person did not need the shaping. And so they decided since they didn't need actual shaping going on, they might as well just take a little tuck to make it look like they had shaping. I believe also that they have drawn a thread in the center back to find the grain because although this looks like a seam, it's not, it's just like texture, but it's not a fold either. And it would be remarkable if a fold lasted that long. So I believe they actually drew the thread 
to find the grain of the fabric. And then we're like, okay, that is our center back. That is where we're starting and did the construction from there. So that's very, very interesting. Here along the bottom, they have made binding on the bias. So this is just a very narrow, about 3 8 inch wide binding that goes all the way along the bottom. Whereas over here on the edge, it's just folded in. That stitch line that I was mentioning before, you can see that right there. That is a tiny, tiny row of stitches. But again, the tuck is kind of just a weird thing to me. I'm not really sure why they did that. And here on the edge, it is also just folded in. The interesting thing about both of these edges right here, by the way, is that I do not believe that that is actually a fold. Just from the little bit that I can see from underneath where the stitches are coming apart, this doesn't seem like a fold. It seems like maybe a selvage, even though it doesn't look any different because it's definitely finished, as in like the weave is finished, but it's not fraying, nothing like that. So. Yeah, I think that that's a selvage, even though it doesn't look like a selvage, which is quite interesting. Up here at the neckline, they've again gone with that bias strip to do the finishing. Over at the arm's eye, by the way, now one of the things I should mention since I just grabbed it, this is heavily padded. Like, I don't know if you can see this right here. This is not pinching down any further because there is so much padding in here. I wish you could feel this. Like this is at least one or two layers of padding to get that really nicely rounded over the bust shape that was so popular in the 1860s. The lining is also pieced, which I don't think has anything to do with the padding, but there is piecing right there going on in the lining, but it's this whole front section that is all padded. Just taking a look from the outside, it's pretty much everything from like here up to about here, that's all padded. So right above the top of the darts, almost all the way to the shoulder is all padded to get that rounded look. And the padding goes out almost all the way to the sleeve. It stops right about here. Looking at the inside of the sleeve, we have another kind of just like unfinished seam right here. And then the lining for the sleeve is either a different polished cotton or it is faded differently because it comes off as a darker brown in there. And again, we've got that kind of unfinished seam going on here at the shoulder. And the padding is on both sides. I guess I should say that. And so is the piecing, in fact, is also on both sides. But yeah, there's quite a lot of padding. I'd say the same amount of padding on both sides, but it is thick. Like, I wish I had some way to measure it because it's literally like if I pinch it together, I feel like it goes to about here thick of padding. So pretty remarkable. And frankly, the construction on these types of bodices is so simple, as we have now found out, deceptively simple, that really that's all there is to look at on this one. I am so glad that I've been able to add this to my collection. I think it's so gorgeous. I just freaking adore all of these bows. I mean, they are the cutest thing ever. And the plaid is wonderful. Oh, I forgot. There was one other thing that I wanted to point out. They mended the shoulder at some point with a beautiful mending job. Look at that. They matched the fabric. They did tiny, tiny little stitches. Just a really, really wonderful mending job on that shoulder. Oh, I guess I should mention the sleeve is a two-piece sleeve. It's hard to kind of see the construction details because of the fullness and the narrowness of the sleeve, the fullness of the upper part of the sleeve and just how narrow it gets at the wrist. But we do have two pieces here. So we have a seam right here on the outside, the back part of the outside, and then another seam here on the inside of the arm. and. You know, they tried to match it up here, but when you're matching pieces that are just different shapes, it's kind of hard. So overall, I think they did a pretty good job of matching their plaids, though. And that's really about it on this super, super cute 160-year-old bodice from the 1860s. So just to give you an idea of just how tiny this bodice is too, it is 22 inches at the waist, about 28 or 28 and a half inches at the bust, and only 14 inches from shoulder to waist. So this thing is super, super tiny. I am almost positive that it would have been worn 
by a sort of older teenager is my guess just in how cute it is. I don't think it's a child's piece. I do think that this was still worn by a young woman but it's definitely worn by someone younger and smaller and more petite. And just like so many other pieces that I've talked about on this channel, that is why it's still around. This is a total example of survival bias. The tiniest things survive because they're not able to be worn by as many people. So they don't get used as costumes or just dug up for dress up or anything like that, like so many larger pieces will have done over the years, crumbling away into nothingness. So that is why we have so many of these small pieces around it is because of survival bias. So anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed this lovely, lovely little tiny 1860s bodice that is just so adorable. You can see how I subconsciously must have made the decision that I needed a plaid dress decorated with bows too because obviously it was popular even 30 years after when my 1830s dress is supposed to be. So it's always fun to share these older pieces with you and especially sharing something that is so old. I only have three pieces in this time era in the 1860s so really, really fun to get to share it with you all. So if you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs on Tuesdays and other costuming content like this out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to support me and all of the work that I do on this channel and help me buy other fantastic antique pieces to show you all, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Kofi account down below. Speaking of which, I would love to take this opportunity to thank so many of my wonderful patrons. These are all of my patrons in my romantic, Victorian, and Edwardian level tiers. And those are Heidi, MeQ, Sharon, Carlin, Maria, Mirage, Sarah, Tiffany, Bobby, Grace, Susan, and Vivian. Thank you all so much, as well as all of the rest of my patrons, and thank you all for joining me this week. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!